What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Epic 7 video today here on the channel guys and today we're going to be doing our quick review um, over Biken which is going to be the limited hero that we are going to have for the first two weeks of the Guilty Gear collab. Um, we actually were generous enough to get a card from her which I believe was published by Smellgate or Super Creative on the Stoke website if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, this is going to be her overall layout of her stats, her devotion skill, you know, all of her awakenings, what she's going to get, everything like that, um, as well as what her devotion is going to be um, and all that kind of good stuff. And then we're also going to go over as well her skills, how I think she can be used, is she worth summoning for, which obviously she's a limited hero. So most of you guys are going to summon because she does have that pity system integrated into her banner. But we're going to go over her nonetheless and talk about her. So First of all, let's go over her stats. So we're gonna to refer to the card on the right-hand side of the layout. So she is an Earth Thief, a Scorpio, and her devotion is attack for the other three allies. So I believe, I wanna say it was something around like 12% or 13%. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. It might actually tell us here. Um, let's see. Does it actually show her? It doesn't, does it? No, it doesn't show here. Okay. Well, at any rate, guys, it's attack percent. So uh, then let's go over the rest of her stats here. Let me get back to where I wanted to be. All right, there we go. All right. So her attack is going to be at 1228. Defense of 473. Uh, dual attack chance, normal 5%. Health at 6266, which is pretty decent health for a thief, actually. Uh, credit chance at 23%, effectiveness 0, speed only 113, which actually, so I shouldn't say only 113, 113 is pretty good, actually, 113 is pretty good. Anything over 105 is decent, um, and then credit damage of 150%, so that's kind of like the stats that she has laid out. Now let's go into her abilities, and then we'll go over uh, like how potentially you could build her and what she could be used for potentially. So her first ability, um, and we did go over these a little bit in the, in the patch notes, so kind of reiterating um, what she does, uh, but attacks the enemy with a 45% chance, maximum 70% chance to inflict two bleed effects for two turns. A crit hit chance will reduce the caster's skill cooldowns by one turn, so that will bring, say she's at full cooldowns, um, her skill two will go down to three turns, and then her skill three will go down to six turns. So. Then after Awakening, she attacks with a 55% chance. And all of these, I believe, are single target attacks, just so you guys are aware. But attacks uh, with 55%, max 80% chance of inflicting three bleeds uh, effects for two turns. A crit hit will grant an extra turn. So, and she's a thief, so you could use RNL with her or Dust Devil with her. Um, you know, you could get extra attacks even off her S1 to get extra bleeds and then to reduce your cooldowns, things like that. So very, very cool. Though I would probably lean on RNL way more than this because you can proc two extra turns. So we know with Karen that if you get an RNL trigger and then also on her, uh, what is it, her S2, I believe, gets you the extra turn, you would actually get two extra turns, which is pretty insane, actually. Um, okay, so then uh, her S3 is delivers a deadly detonating blow detonate or sorry delivers a deadly blow detonating all bleed effects inflicted on the enemy at the end of the turn a critical hit uh a, um a critical hit increases the combat readiness of all allies by 15 percent or a maximum of 25 percent okay so let's go into this first so basically she has a couple different things going on she has an extra turn proc she has obviously bleed effects she has some skill cooldown reduction built into her kit, and then she has uh, detonation and combat readiness. So the problem I see with her is her damage output is an insanely high, um, and to really get that damage on her S3, you actually cannot use her as a turn one comp. So for like for PvP, for instance, I it would be really hard to use her because you would basically have to chance on RNG if you don't crit on her S2. So you could go S2 into S3 on turn one, but you have to get a crit. If you don't get a crit, then basically she's gonna get killed because she's a thief. So she's gonna get one shot at more than likely. Um, especially if you're fighting a any kind of defense team that's got any fire or DPS or units like a fire can or anything like that. Um, so 
or Soul even. Soul could uh, could one shot her as well. Keep in mind, Soul is uh, I want to say I think he's six speed faster than Biken. So there is also the chance that if you get out sped and you're not running a CR pusher along with her, then you could run into a situation where the Soul could potentially one shot you. Um, so just keep that in mind, guys. Um, but I mean, so for PvP, I honestly just wouldn't lean on her. I feel like there's too much RNG if you miss a crit. Um, you know, even my Luna every now and then will miss crits. And my Luna had with her passive has 100% crit rate. So keep in mind that even if you build her max crit, there still is an opportunity where you could miss crits, um, especially her being Earth. Um, you know, um, I, her being Earth will help actually because uh, the meta is a lot of water units right now with your Lunas, with your DNs, with your Angelicas. Um, you still see Kisei every now and again. Um, so there are a lot of water units still used very heavily in PvP. So she could be used. I'm just saying that it's a risky situation to run her. And you are going to have to have a lot of skill investment. Because you see here in all her abilities, they all get an effectiveness increase. So effectiveness on the combat readiness on her S3. Effectiveness on the bleed on her S2. And then effectiveness on the bleed on the S1. Maybe the S1 may be the only one you may want to skip on. Um, if you're, especially if you're if you're trying to build her for more PvP orientated, then you could do it that way. Um, as far as that goes, um, as far as the build for her now, when we go into this, I think definitely she has to have crit rate because her skill too is so reliant on getting that extra turn to land those criticals. So you need to strive for that 100% crit rate. I feel on her is like mandatory, just like it is with Karen. You really want to hit that 100% crit. Um, Crit damage, you probably, I would say, you probably want over 200% at least. Maybe try to get to like 225, 230-ish. Um, attack, I would try to hit 2,500 to 3,000. Uh, speed, so if you are not going to run a CR pusher with her, minimum you have to hit 220 speed. And that is what really makes her hard. If you're not going to run a Rusid, a Shadow Rose, um, an Exerly Lots, anything like that with, um, or, um, or Judith then you really, really, really have to be cognizant of where your substats are going. Like, you can't get, like, defense substats or effect resistance substats, you know, HP substats. You need to go full in on your effectiveness. You need to go full in on your uh, crit rate and your crit damage uh, and your speed. Like, those are the four that really, really matter. Effectiveness, crit rate, speed and crit damage i feel are going to be the most important uh crit damage you could vice versa be that attack in some situations um where you could lean it could be a balance between attack and crit damage but definitely the three you have to have is going to be you're going to need to have 100 percent effect in this minimum you're going to need to have 100 percent crit rate and you're going to need to have 220 plus speed um depending on where you're at in pvp as far as the pvp builds go now for pve where you could build her and where she could shine, definitely Golem. I feel like she's going to be amazing in Golem. She's going to be able to stack up those bleeds. So if she crits the Golem on turn one and then can go into the S3, give all your guys a push and then detonate. And then she can then reset and go back to her um, S1 and then go into her S2, S3 again. So she can kind of loop those. Really, really cool um, synergy. She could do that with Golem. Um, Banshee, from what I've heard, if you can get those maximum, I think it's eight or nine bleed stacks. Um, you can actually do like 40k to the Banshee, so pretty fast. So I feel like she's going to be a pretty good uh, option for Banshee. For me, for instance, I probably will build her for Banshee um, over time. Uh, she's not my priority right now. My priority right now is still working on more of my PvP and Guild War units. So um, I just don't... I personally will not be going out of my way to build her for Guild War and PvP right now. I would definitely build her up to be on my Banshee team so I can start farming uh, effect resistance and destruction sets. Um, so I feel like she could be a very good option though for Banshee. If she's like your one unit you're lacking and you're like, oh man, I really need destruction sets to progress me in the game, whether it's to beat Abyss Towers, Hell Raids, um, you know, farming other hunts, things like that, then yeah, then she's a good unit to invest in. And being a thief, she has a lot of really good artifacts she can use. Obviously her artifact that she gets from the event will be very, very good for the Banshee hunts. Um, and then she obviously RNL is a very good option as well for her. If you guys ended up getting that either on your Mystic Summons or if you bought that in the shop, um, I think it was like what was it last month? I think it was. It was in the powder shop, if I'm not mistaken. Um, can't really remember exactly off the top of my head, but so overall, should you pull? So my thing is, if you do not have enough books 
for Dizzy and her, and you know within two to four weeks, you know you're not going to be able to get, um, you know, what is it, 1,200 and... 1,210 bookmarks total between your Sky Stones and your bookmarks. I would really play it close to the chest, and I would do whatever summons you think you can spare for Biken right now, and really reserve for Dizzy, because I low-key think Dizzy is going to be the best hero from the collab. I really feel that. Obviously, we can't substantiate that claim until we see Dizzy's uh, patch notes, or if she gets randomly leaked by someone out there. Um you know, then we can make more of a, you know, for sure decision on who you should go for. But I feel like there are a lot of ways you don't really need her, um, especially if you're purely in PvP and you're endgame like myself and you've beaten all the PvE content. I don't really think it's a, necess a necessity to build her. I will get her still just because it's going to be a limited hero for collection purposes down the road. I'm, like for me, she's probably going to stay in my box and she's going to be there for a while until I have the resources to build her for a certain content in the game. There may be a hero that's released with her and may make her insane in PvP Guild Wars. That can always happen, obviously. Um, but, you know, when I'm eventually at the point where I can get into Banshee farming, I'm not really so focused on Wyvern and Golem anymore. Then, yeah, of course, then I'm going to build her. And I'll, all this, and most of the sets I'm going to build with her are probably going to be from the Wyvern sets. So I'll probably build her, you know, either on attack crit or on speed crit. So that's my overall opinion on her. Um, is she bad? By no means is she bad. But she is a very, she's a character that was taken, she was like kind of a slice between like Surin and, and Karen a little bit. Um, or if you could just want to call her an upgraded Surin that gets an extra turn with, uh, it's pretty much what she was. So there wasn't a lot of creativity as where Soul was a very creative design hero in my opinion with his S2. So um, just keep all this kind of things in your mind guys and just be aware that there is another hero coming this is not the only hero we're going to be having to summon for for the collab so just keep that in mind if you guys are going to spend a little cash on the game or if you guys have saved up so much bookmarks and sky stones that you're well prepared for this event then yeah go for biking <laughs> i almost said bacon again then go for biking if not then definitely uh keep some in reserve so you guys aren't completely left out out in the cold when uh, Dizzy comes out in two weeks, guys. So anyway, that's going to be the video today, guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's breakdown of Biken, where she can be used, how useful is she. And if I missed anything in the comment section down below, because I know I'm not perfect, please do leave that, um, you guys, input on her. Um, I know a lot of people were saying she could potentially one-shot if she can crit and then go into her S3 and then push. Like, there could be some synergy there, um, depending how fast you can get her. The question is, can you get her fast enough? to compete in the current uh, mode of arena you're playing in. But nonetheless, guys, that's going to be the video today. If you guys did enjoy today's content, subscribe down below. Like the video if you guys didn't like today's content. And I hope to see you guys in the next Epic 7 video. Peace out, guys.